Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This time we're going to take you along to our Bupa Medicals. Some footage of the, the day out, it's pretty much a day out and I think it takes about two hours in total for all yeah. of us. I feel like we were there longer though, but I um, need to set aside two hours. So you need the medical for the PR part of the visa. We didn't have one for the 482 as it wasn't necessary because it was only a temporary visa. But now we're going on to the PR section. The requirements is the medical. So it was quite a rigorous, <laughs> rigorous test. Um, we felt like we were lab rats. Um, so the whole situation is very bizarre. You get to the, uh, SARS was like in this big building on like the third floor or something. And you get called over and you have to present your passports. And we already paid up front for our medicals, haven't we? Yeah, so for the process of that, you when you get your PR application, you get n issued a HAP number, which is like basically a, like an NHS kind of number for each individual. Once you've done that, you have to do a referral letter online. Basically, you've got to say, you know, if you've got any existing conditions, stuff like that. Um, then it issues you an e referral letter, which you've then got to take with you with your passport. So, yeah, you get called to the desk at the front, and yeah, they basically go through your passport. You've got to confirm some details. And then, yeah, lead you through to the, the special room behind the slidey door. <laughs> so, behind the slidey door special room, you have to go and get undressed. You have to keep the bottom part of your clothes on, but um, you have to take everything from waist. Uh, obviously, jewellery, you're going to have an x-ray. Uh, girls in our party were asked if they were pregnant. Obviously, they can't uh, x-ray if you're pregnant. Um, which was a little bit awkward for the 14 year old, but um, <laughs> yeah, luckily all was good. Um, but yeah, you get changed um, this gown and um, if you like a locker key so you can put all your stuff in there, you're not allowed your mobile phone. Um, come back into the waiting room and it's full of other gowned uh, people waiting, including the rest of your family. Um, yeah, you get like a patient number, so like on a document, you'll get like. A ticket number. Yeah, like a ticket number. So then they basically call your number out, go to such and such room. So the first one was, was generally was an x ray, yeah. So you go in, they basically got like, you've got like a hugger, hugger box. They do your x ray. I think they can pretty much see it there and then from what it sounded like, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. And because one of our actors is classed as a child, she was able to come in with me. So I was with her all uh, time for every everything that we did. So that was good. Yeah, so x-rays are done, then go back into the waiting room, probably literally sat down for like two minutes and your name gets called again. And then so you go in and see another doctor, they weigh you, they measure you. Measure your height. And in terms of blood tests, so the 14 year old didn't have to have a blood test but anybody over the age of 18 did. And uh, what were they testing? It was for? for HIV and I think we said in previous videos like a serum function. So basically, they check your kidneys. So yeah, they take one sample of blood that goes off for both tests. Uh, you have an eyesight test as well. Don't you? You've got to read the board. Yeah, like you would an opticians. So that's that's room two. So yeah. It's like, <laughs> and you go back to your waiting room again, and then get called out and this was kind of more of like a school examination by another doctor. Yeah, so they ask you at the start if you have a preference as to male or female and we chose female doctor for our daughters. Did you have a male or female? I had a male. Ah, okay, so uh, basically... Uh, Just ask you a load of questions like have you had any operations? Yeah. Um, and you have any obviously just ask you to stand up, put your arms out and like check under your armpits I guess for... Lumps and yeah, bumps. Yeah, lumps and bumps. Can you bend over and touch your toes? Check your stomach. Yeah, and then yeah, like the old tap on the knee with those little rubber mallet and... Ice, like they sh shone a light in our yeah, eye, did they do it no, to you? I guess it's luck of the draw, but yeah, basically like a, a tiny physical exam, I guess, basically make sure you can move, I guess, but... Yeah. Yes, yeah, so then they kind of write the notes on the computer and then they say, right, well, go back to the waiting room. 
Yeah, and the doctor confirmed that she had already seen our x-ray. Uh, she'd obviously only been taken like maybe 10, 20 minutes before. Uh, so you kind of feel at that point that they already know whether there's anything wrong with your x-ray. And yeah, actually uh, we came out with a couple of matching letters, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Which we were a bit, well, I was a bit worried about because she, she said that she heard a heart murmur. Now, I don't sure. remember the last time my heart was checked, probably when I was pregnant, like, years ago. I certainly don't feel like there's anything wrong with my heart or never been told that there is. And she said that it's very common. She said, I wouldn't believe how many people go in there and they hear a heart murmur. I asked her if it would have any impact on the application and she said no, uh, that I should go to the doctor and get it checked out in the next month just in case it's anything. Obviously done a lot of Googling online and have read that basically it can either be absolutely nothing and just like sometimes anxiety can cause it and it is quite um, stressful going through that process because you don't know what they're going to do to you. It's not like they tell you at the start exactly what's going to happen. Uh, could be an underlying thing or anything. So anyway, I'm hoping it wasn't anything and hoping that as she said it wasn't going to affect the application and then what was on your letter? I um, had high blood pressure or higher blood pressure so obviously it was a bit high to start with and she's like oh just sit there and relax it's like <laughs> it's quite hard to do that obviously then they had the fire alarm was going off they had a drill so that was going off in the background so you're stressing about that yeah yeah so in the meantime you're trying to have your blood pressure taken obviously it went down from the first reading but yeah it was still higher than normal but again they issued just a letter of you know, duty of care that you should go and get it checked out, which is fine. But yeah, the heart murmur thing was interesting how they could pick it up on a stethoscope compared to like a proper cardiograph, but I'm sure they're, they are trained professionals and I'm sure they know what they're listening to, but... Yeah, anyway, I'm hoping it was just like lucky that it happened at that time and I, I do honestly feel like I was very like stressed and nervous like well yeah it's you're in a building you don't know what's going to happen it's quite a important yeah. thing you know like your whole kind of future in Australia depends on this yeah test so yeah imagine your stress level is going to be a little bit raised so anyway I will go to the doctor and I will get it checked out but uh, see I have also only just got over a uh, throat infection and being ill for such a long time so I don't really feel like right now is the right time to go I like haven't been myself for ages so uh, I will go and yeah just hopefully it's nothing yeah, yeah well Hopefully you've seen the footage that we've shown you of a little day trip out. Obviously you couldn't film in there being medical practice and there was signs everywhere saying no filming. But yeah, it was an interesting day out. Like I said, probably about two hours in all from start to finish. The advice is it would take five working days to get our results. Uh, we've been quite anxious about that, but the results are in. What could they be? We passed our medical mm. <laughs> Go us! <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we are so happy and uh, just now waiting for that final... Yes, yeah, so the actual case has got to be just signed off now by like the visa professional. So yeah, we're waiting on that now. Obviously it could, like in their, their website says, it could take 16 months or it could, it's been known to take sooner. So yeah. it's a waiting game now. Yeah, so we've got bridging visas anyway, uh, because our temporary visas expire in June. Um, we've already got them bridging visas. We plan to go uh, back to UK next year. So before we go, we need to contact our immigration uh, agent so that she can sort out some other There's kind of visa. There's a different bridging visa, bridging visa B, I think, if you want to travel outside of Australia. Yeah, just in case something crazy like a pandemic happens and we get stuck in the UK and can't come back. So I uh, have to do that. But honestly, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe we even get the PR visa granted before. And then, yeah, happy days. Can you guys be the second to know? Because obviously we'll be the first. Mm, might be the third. We have to tell our family first. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we kind of, you don't really find out your um, results yourself. They've got to go through your IMI account. So, your visa agent, I would imagine, or if you're doing it yourself on your IMI account, it just kind of, it's on there saying, yeah, no further action needed. 
Yeah. The migration agent didn't actually tell us that the results were in. We um, told her and then she logged in and found them. So um, definitely if you're going through the same, it's worth just sending an email to your agent just to ask them to check uh, they're in. Yeah, there you go. That's the whole medical process. Um, it's done now. It was kind of a bit of a daunting time, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was daunting before we went, and then to both come out with le like medical letters was even more daunting. Yeah. And there's the wait, and yeah, obviously you don't really know how these people make their decision because when we looked at our uh, results on immigration, it basically says something like health check successful, no further follow up yeah. needed. Uh, so yeah, I did ask the doctor at the time, like, how do they, like, is it a scoring thing? How do they make the decision that we're like, fit and healthy? And she couldn't really say, she just said they basically sent all of the information to immigration and then immigration make the decision. So don't know how they do it either, but... Yeah, I think like the, the big one is tuberculosis. It's, they're really hot on that, so anything that shows up on your chest x-ray obviously be a stumbling block I would imagine but yeah and when I was um, reading because I was so paranoid about this bloody heart murmur I did see that a lot of the times like if it's not the main applicant on the visa and it's somebody else in the party that has like a slight health issue normally I think they would sort of overlook that anyway if it's not the main oh, right. applicant but I guess it really just depends on what's wrong with you and there you go hope you enjoyed that little insight give you a bit of information on if you've got upcoming medicals or the whole medical process obviously I don't know what it'd be like in the UK obviously that's the the Brisbane version um hope you enjoyed it Yes, to all of our new subscribers and um, thank you for watching and following the YouTube and the Instagram and um, see you in the next one.